Half-Life 2 is possibly one of my favorite video games of all time. Now in one of my previous videos I talked about another great game, Battlefield Bad Company, and why that's on, I think on a short list of games that I really appreciated growing up. As I didn't really play that many games, but the, the two that I did play that I absolutely loved was Battlefield Bad Company and Half-Life 2. Now the thing was is that Half-Life 2, when it when it came out in 2004, it was pretty revolutionary for the time, and with its graphics, with the kind of physics, with the, the world that it was, the type of gameplay it was, and it has developed a very loyal fan base since then. And it's amazing the fact is like how much has been, uh, how much when it, in terms of like lore, gameplay, and stories have come out from this series in and of itself. Now. The thing is, is that I came across Half-Life 2, started playing it around 2018, 2019, so I kind of came late in the game. But once I started playing it on my PC, I was amazed by the environmental storytelling, the way that this world is set up, the lore, the kind of oppressive combine forces, the alien forces that invaded Earth and now have full control over it, and you as the protagonist have to really figure out a way to defeat them while also learning more about this world, the problems, the issues, the way that humans have survived. It, it was all very engaging to me and I found it absolutely fascinating because the story was focused on just a single person having to overcome the odds and also the fact that you're you're operating on earth but within this alien world and you're trying to learn more about it that's what I really loved about Half-Life 2 was the fact that here it was this narrative this narrative with us as a single player that was extremely engaging that was amazing to play I I love the fact that you had these assortment of weapons and you you kind of had to learn how to be able to improvise and understand like how to get through your environment because there would be puddle puzzles that would be set up in which you had to get through and also the thing was is that the combine in and of itself the alien force that invaded earth and now have taken over was, were fascinating in the way that they operate, the way that they oppressed human beings, the way that they constructed cities and, constru and constructed their kind of elements of their structures in the, in the distance that you see and their headquarters and stuff. It's all so amazing to me and I love the fact that it's given so much detail and there's so much you can learn more about it through the story and through details within the game because of the fact that like here the game it doesn't hand everything to you. It's not so obvious of what's going on. You have to pay attention and you and you learn more tidbits over time as you play the game. And that's what I absolutely love and I think it's a great example of environmental storytelling within the narrative. And that's the thing is that I love that it's not a basically a kind of multiplayer game like many other uh, many other um, games that are popular no nowadays. It's a strictly single player game because of the fact that it uh, it it just focuses on this narrative that's the type of story that's the type of game that I want to be playing because I'm not really interested in in gaining achievements I'm not interested in gaining skins or anything like that that many people are very much focused on in today's video games I'm more focused on what is the world within the game what is the story the narrative and the characters that are within this game and I think Half-Life 2 really is a prime example of a game that's phenomenal in that regard you have have the enemy who is made up of like the combi police force you have the stormtroopers types that you're going up against you have also an alien species a uh, number of alien species that you have to go up against within the game that are now infesting the planet and you fight up against them and you have allies as well that help you out and also you get these two uh, new types of weapons like uh, for example the gravity gun right you pay, you can gr grab an object and hurl it at the enemy like a uh, in a way to make it as a weapon a dangerous weapon and that's what I love about the game is that there's physics within the game that make it a lot more interesting than just the fact of the kind of linear playing through like you, what you would get usually with modern warfare no it's it's very much like instead of saying oh the the objective is over here you have to figure out blah 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 you have to figure that out it's not going to be laid out the groundwork for you for you to do it you have to be in this environment and understand oh this is a puzzle oh there here's this obstruction that i have to go through and i have to figure out a way to get around it that's what i love about about this game is that again it's this silent protagonist 
who is just observing this environment and you have to learn from what's going on and trying to figure out the way to kind of move through the move through the environment now a lot of times uh, people have talked about the differences between Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 1. Half-Life 1 came out in around in 1998 and it was very popular for the time for the fact that it was it was very much uh, kind of a, a really a greater successor to Doom. Those types of first person shooters that came out at the time where you have it had it be extremely violent it was a sort of survival horror game and people people thought it was really fantastic in that regard now I haven't played Half-Life 1 to be honest with you um, I have watched a lot of walkthroughs of the game though and it looks fine I think it looks good it's just that because I've started because I started really with Half-Life 2 I feel that Half-Life 1 is a completely different game for me to play and I'm not that interested or invested in putting time towards that game because that game is more of a survival horror game where you're trying to survive this sort of attack that happens on the Black Mesa research facility you're trying to survive as this as the scientist Gordon Freeman going up against these aliens and you're trying to get through them and, and survive uh, the destruction of this base and it's uh, you're essentially uh, it's essentially your basic very much uh, standard survival horror game whereas Half-Life 2 does have those elements but it's more of a dystopian game and that's what I like about it rather than Half-Life 1 whereas Half-Life 1 you're restricted to sort of a one place one environment kind of and with Half-Life 2 you get to more explore this world and, and there's more things you can learn from the from the world of Earth being occupied by aliens rather than in Half-Life 1. Now I'm not saying Half-Life 1 is bad at all I'm not saying that's a that's a terrible game but it's just the fact it's like I like Half-Life 2 a lot better I'm not really interested in the in the first one with all that said though is that I kind of am saddened by the fact that with Half-Life 2 coming out such a long time ago in 2004 there really hasn't been a Half-Life 3 that really kind of adds to the story now of course in 2020 we did get Half-Life Alex but the thing was is that Half-Life Alex came out on the VR headset and people were confused by this by the fact that it was just strictly for the VR headset it wasn't for like PC or console games so it was limiting itself already to people who had VR headsets and people most people don't want to play a game through that experience of having to play it through a VR headset they want to play it like a standard computer game in your, in your standard screen you know like Half-Life 2 but they didn't want to go in that direction. They wanted to do sort of a VR headset type of game and try to be revolutionary with the graphics and the kind of gameplay and the, and the mechanics of the game. And while that's interesting, I think it's not very satisfying for a lot of the hardcore Half-Life 2 fans because they want to see more of this story move forward. And it's sad to me that Gabe Newell, the president of, of Valve, really hasn't... I guess uh, put out updates or hints at the fact of when Half-Life 3 will be coming out. When is it really ever going to come to fruition? Because it seems like it won't be. Half-Life Alex maybe hinted at it at the end of that game, but like when is this going to ever occur? When is Half-Life 3 ever going to occur? Because people have been waiting for it for a very long time. Remember, Half-Life 2 came out in 2004, almost 20 years ago, and you have this dedicated fan base that is built up around the game and have created their own type of Half-Life 2 content, which might be somewhat of an addition to the game, but it's you know it would be great if we get Half-Life 3 as well. Now, like I stated, it does have a dedicated fan base, and it's wonderful that there's so many people that are creating great content that adds to the lore of the game, that adds to the uh, s uh, the kind of world that it is within the game. I think one great example is the Perry God. He uploads a lot of fantastic videos where he does animations showing like these little short stories of humans surviving within uh, the world of Half-Life 2, or the enemies essentially trying to eliminate humans who are resisting or showing the technology that the aliens possess 
all this stuff just more environmental storytelling more uh, uh kind of exposing how the world within half-life 2 works and i love this type of content and i'm glad that there's fans out there that are able to upload and publish these types of short stories for people who are really dedicated to half-life 2 and it's wonderful it's awesome there's also other kind of funny type of videos that are out there for half-life 2 there's series that are comedy series but it's just amazing to me more of like the people like the like the Perry God who create really great content that, that just expands the world. One of the things too that I actually became invested in Half-Life 2 early on was there was this short series called Escape from C City 17. Escape from City 17 was really this type of like independent project that was being made by these, I think these students, I believe. And when I saw it for the first time, I was like impressed by the fact because of it, it came out like in around 2011, 2012, for the CGI that was included in the video, and it made it look really impressive. It wasn't like cheap stuff. It looked pretty cool. And I was really amazed by the CGI effects, by the fact that here you have a story, a kind of like a little short film that it takes place within Half-Life 2, and it looks great. And yeah, there might be hokey acting in there, but at the same time, I think that you could see the kind of dedication that the uh, that the guys who made this series and the love that they have for how ha the half-life world it is shown through these films and i thought these films were actually going to go on to be more of like a feature length movies that were going to be more expanding the story of half-life 2 but i guess it just never came to fruition as well i guess the projects just you know ran out of money or were too, you know too expensive the fact is like you know it takes a lot of time doing cgi and i completely understand editing and and doing all that kind of stuff is difficult so they didn't want to continue doing that for a long period of time so i completely understand but it's really again another testament to how a lot of the fans really want to continue these this series and really want to continue to make great content and i i mean this has been just a short rant about half-life 2 the fact that you get so much in this game and it's so wonderful to play and it's so wonderful to kind of like learn more about this world i mean i i would just honestly tell people to play the game rather than me just explain the aspects of it of of how it works in the storyline that's within it because i think is that the more you go into it without knowing that much the more fun it is and the more immersive it is of an experience and that's what i love about it i mean to me i think that the fact that Half-Life 3 might not come to uh, come to fruition. It's very sad. I've seen a lot of hu uh, YouTube videos that are talking about why is it taking so long. There's so many fans that are seriously just dying off because the fact is like it's taking so long for this game to come out. And I'm thinking, well, what do we do? You know, what do we do now? You know, do, do the fans pick up the kind of like baton and, and move this uh, series forward? What what ha what happens from here? Because it's like again you have uh, again and this is for Gabe Newell and for Valve again you have this great series that has a huge fan base but yet Valve has decided to put their resource and invest their time into other projects such as uh, Steam such as other games and stuff but what's going on here it is great that Half-Life Alex did come out and I'm appreciative of the of the series even though it's only for VR but what more can there be and I hopefully that we could see more projects in the future that will come out let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Half-Life 2 I just wanted to rant a little bit about this series and talk about it uh, did you enjoy the game do you like first person in single player games where you are in, immersed in this world and you don't know that much about it you have to kind of go through a game and there has to be a lot of environmental storytelling for you to uh, gain a lot of information about that world let me know if you like those types of games or if you're just strictly more for multiplayer games um, yeah let me know in the comment section down below Give me your thoughts on Half-Life 2. I would love to hear it, as I really love the series. It's absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.